Hey gang, welcome to Model Review right here on ToyWorld.com starring me, Duvall, and my buddy, Dan Draper. Yay. That was a weird wave. I almost expect something to me me moop. Me me moop. That's <laughs> scary. Me me moop on the puppet. Me me moop. Me me moop on the puppet. Me me moop on the puppet. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Gang, we're back with another all-new G.I. Joe review. Yeah. Uh, this time we're taking a look at the other uh, G.I. Joe 50th anniversary. Nice, nice you got the memo there for the, the clothing. Oh, <laughs> that's the uh, wrong franchise. Wrong franchise. Sorry. That's okay. I mean, imagine. In, in previous, in previous uh, Comic Cons, you would have, we would have actually fit because they had the, the combined. That's true. We would have fit, but not, but not this time. I don't have a whole lot of Joe stuff. I'm sorry. I don't Boo! Have, I don't have Joe hat. I'm a monster. I have this hat and the Thundercats hat and an Iron Man hat and a Disney World hat. I'm not, not a Joe hat. I need a Joe hat. Do need a Joe hat? I do. But we're back. We're going to take a look at the uh, the last vehicle to set. Yeah, because because the Comic Con set's not happening. I don't think. <laughs> no. Not for me. No. no. Too expensive. Not for me. Yeah, too expensive. Uh, but this is the uh, the last of the sets to be released uh, for the 50th anniversary, and we've still got a couple of two packs. No. Uh, oh yeah. Well, we've got a second wave of, of two packs coming yeah, out with. Yeah. Uh, Baroness and Lady J and Snowjob and an Arctic Back. Yeah, so we've looked, at, we've looked at one set of two packs. we got some more two packs yeah. coming. Uh, but today we're taking a look at uh, none other than the uh, the very cool box set, the Battle Below cool. Zero. Because ah, it's Arctic. Because it's Arctic. Yeah. The Battle Below Zero for the G.I. Joe 50th anniversary from Hasbro. And this box set is uh, pretty cool. And it's kind of uh, much anticipated because not only is it the uh, the Ghost Hawk, uh, which is the, uh, the, the uh, I guess what would be the original name of it? I can't remember. Um, I think it was the like the Atoll or something like that, wasn't it? No, um, I think it was just like a hawk or something. Okay. So you've got the uh, another version of the, this classic vintage vehicle, uh, as well as none other than the Cobra Wolf. The first time it's been available uh, since the since the vintage it's been line. A time, yeah. Yeah. Since this is the uh, 25th anniversary. Uh, 50th. And the, the 50th, but it's the 25th anniversary. I mean, I, I mean, well, <coughs> the the story that I've heard is that they were going to do this the the Wolf for the fifth, for the 25th anniversary line. And it was going to be the last wave of vehicles, and it just didn't get produced. Mm. Um, and for some reason, that they, they just shipped the molds over to China. I got you. Um, so they had the molds. They had the molds. Yeah. And so, the line around. Yeah. So they figured, why not use them? We spent the money for them. Yeah. But of course, it also comes with uh, uh, both the uh, both Snake Eyes here. So you get Snake Eyes, and you get the Cobra Wolf. Uh, um, the Ice Viper. The Ice Viper. I believe. Yes, he is the Ice Viper. Uh, and of course, the front of the box is very familiar to anyone that's been collecting the G.I. Joe 50th or anyone who's watched the past reviews. Uh, you've got this great, great artwork of the two vehicles in action, uh, fighting, you know, not one another, but kind of fighting next to one another. Yeah, they're sort of vaguely shooting. And yeah, they're like, shoot over here, pachoo, 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 We're sort of on the same ice flow, technically, or whatever, in battle. Yeah, whatever. And then you've got a window showing the figures inside here, both the figures that are included. So yep. uh, it's pretty cool. We, you know, finally people are like, we're Snake Eyes boys in this box set. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then the back of the box, you get uh, a better look at the the vehicles, the figures, uh, as well as a, a much much closer look at the uh, different details of the Cobra Wolf. Because for anyone who hasn't uh, doesn't have fun memories of this vintage vehicle, like myself and like Dave, uh, this, no, actually the Cobra Wolf is one of my favorite vehicles. Yeah, it is probably one of the coolest Joe vehicles that they ever made. It's probably one of the most fun Joe vehicles they ever made. And it's uh, I remember having that. You know, a friend of mine had that during the vintage line when it was out. And it was a lot of fun to play with because it was just really cool. It was just a really cool vehicle. So, and a lot of neat little things. Yeah, we did have a lot of neat little things. But uh, what do you say we uh, we pop the box open, okay. we take a look at the vehicles, and then we'll take a look at the figures. So we hope. All right, let's pop the box open. All right, now the packages are out of the box. Uh, now the, the packages are out of the box. Sorry, now that the vehicles are out of the box, is that better for you, it's more Mr. Mr. I'm grammar police. I'm blah blah blah. Sorry. We've got some very, very cool G.I. Joe vehicles, of course. We'll take a look at the vehicles first. We'll put their uh, their pilots to the side here. Oh, Snake Eyes fell off his There we go. Dave, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, about the awesome, uh, what did we decide it was uh, originally called? Uh, it was called? originally called the, the Skyhawk. The Skyhawk, which is now called the Ghost Hawk. Which is now called the Ghost Hawk, because they probably believe that the, uh, the Ice Wolf out of the way. So you can take a look at this. Let well, the trademark lapse. Yep. Nice little ghost talk there. Yeah, it's a it's a VTOL vehicle. 
basically it was more of a cost-effective way to let kids have like something other than the big, the big planes, the big helicopters. Right. Seats one figure in there in the cockpit. Um, there's a little joystick. Yeah, pretty nicely detailed little cockpit kind yeah. of there. Um, the the engines swivel up and down. To there you go. To your right. All right. Uh, so that the idea is that it, it's like that, and it takes off vertically, and then it goes like you pull them out. Sure. Whoa, right towards my chest. Um, there are spots for four missiles, but you only get two. Which is so weird. There's like things underneath the, the wings and then things on the stabilizers. And then it's got the skids, and then the skids have pegs for uh, the figures. Other feet. figures to sit there, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so that you can have people hanging off the side of this thing. Which is a classic G.I. Joe tradition is to have people hanging off the sides of these vehicles like it's some sort of, you know, New Delhi transportation. <laughs> yeah. When it's not at all. No, in fact, this would be the most dangerous thing you could pop. I mean, imagine you're holding on to the skids of this ah, thing. Ah, yeah. Oh, it's got the front the front cannons that swivel from side to side. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty. I always like this vehicle too, and I like the fact that, of course, you know, like the vintage one, the actual oh, no! the wings are, are are easily removable. A lot of times on the vintage one, that's what's missing is the little wing parts. Yeah. Uh, that or the the engine, which just the engine pops off, just yeah. pops off and pops in there. Um, but of course, these being you know modern era. These have a lot more, a uh, lot more design elements because they've got, you've got the, uh, you've got the, the, oh, the, one the thing. pop off engine. Yeah, covers. it's got the, well, the engine. No, the engine covers are a classic old school. The engine covers there. Tradition. On both sides, pop off. That's one of the things they got away from. Was, yeah. Was having like little off. engine covers and yeah. little maintenance so patches. The, the engine covers actually pop off there, and it's funny in Dave's package, it was actually an extra engine cover. Yeah. For some odd, apparent, strange reason. So, uh, but those, those are pretty easily, you know, pretty easy to pop on and off just like that. And then you can cover them back up, so uh, it's nice. And of course, like Dave said, you know the missiles. The missiles are removable, so you can peg them, uh, you know, behind the wing or underneath the underneath the actual main body there. Although pegging them under the main body does not bode well because they're going to fire directly into the canopy. Meh. <laughs> right like that. I know I'm breaking your toys. I'm sorry. Nice. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's cool though. It's 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 a very nice. Uh, uh, how many times have they done this? Only a couple times, right? Um, well, they did one for 25th. Right. Um, uh, I'm not sure how many more times they've released that. Like, I know there was the Skyhawk and I think the Ghosthawk. I think that's maybe only the two or three times. They've probably done it for Joe Cons a couple times. Right. Because it's a small, cheap vehicle. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't imagine that they didn't let one slide through for Joe Con. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice vehicle, though. Again, it's a, it's a, it was a great vintage vehicle that makes it even better. Uh, 50th anniversary release vehicle, so it's a. Well, it's, it's in Arctic colors for the first time, which is kind yeah, of which is kind of cool. Very, very, very cool. I like that. I like the little vehicle. I've always liked this a lot. I always liked it when it was in the vintage line, and I always like you know like seeing it. As... <laughs> and now we come to the. Yeah, I think this is the thing that the the Peace fan the collectors are stealth. really excited about. Yes. Is the Cobra Wolf, which is awesome, which is sort of their answer to the snow, the Cobra's answer to the Snowcat. Yes, the Cobra Wolf was always really cool too because not only did you have the double canopy, so you could not only fit your Ice Viper but another Cobra member yeah. uh, in the opening canopies, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Ice Viper's uh, underneath the canopy; he's got two little control sticks there, which is pretty cool. But you can also, of course, you know, by moving the gun, you could pop open by squeezing the sides in. Oh, you're supposed to be able to. Really? There we go. It opens up to to show another Cobra member, and there's another control stick in there for another Cobra officer or whatever, or Cobra commander, somebody that's in there. Yeah. Uh, you got some cool elements with the swiveling gun on the back, which actually can pivot up and down and left and right there, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a removable engine cover on the back, which takes a little effort to get off. I don't think it's an engine. It's cover. not an engine cover, but it's kind of. There would be something underneath. Be. Yeah, it's supposed to kind of be what it's supposed to be used for, but it's mostly just a decorative piece. But it is removable. Um, then you've got some great details on the back there, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. The great details on the side. You've got the the you know the three the pegs, pegs for the Cobra guys yeah. to hold on to, so you can fit you know six figures here. Uh, one of the great features of this was that that you could pull the skis off. The skids, yeah, the, the skids, skids off. came off, and then they'd be like yeah. a little you uh, could put snowboards. A, yeah, you could put a figure on the on the pegs there on the skids. So not only could you have figures while it, while it's in this mode. On these pegs, you could have you know, have a figure on each of these. Yeah, pegs. it was hard. It would be it was, hard. It's to hard fit to get. Yeah, it's hard but, to fit on there. But yeah, the idea is that the the, the skids come off. Yeah. And then they could be like a snowboard. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Just nice little design element there. And you got the treads, which you know by this point they didn't have actual treads anymore. They had like little wheels attached yep, to the little, treads. Little wheels attached to the treads. And the idea is that the treads flip up. 
to go into ski mode. Go into ski mode. Yeah, which is pretty cool. So they don't have to use the treads, they can just ski, uh, which is pretty neat. That's, that actually, surprisingly, and I'm going to tell the truth, I didn't know that those did that until we put this together tonight. Yeah. I did not realize that the, the vintage one did this. Oh, yeah. At all. Um, I mean, basically, and I, and I can tell kind of looking at it that it is, it is a new uh, mold. But it is pretty much it pretty much mimics the vintage vehicle right in every way. Yeah, it's got your your front treads here, which are pretty cool. Which those are actually I don't think the vintage one was like this. I think they just moved. But this is actually you can hear it locking into place. Yeah, it's actually it actually locking into place, which is pretty nice. You've got a firing missile silo here that pops up, and you're able to fire out these four missiles, yep. which just slide out thanks to the uh, the finger grooves on the top. Yep. yep, the little tabs on the top, so you can. You can just do that and then they close back up. And then the cool part, the part I always loved about this was you have these removable ski missiles, which slide off. Which, which again, like mimics the Snowcat. The Snowcat yep. had them first. Yes, which is pretty darn neat. Um, I always liked that about this vehicle and the Snowcat was you had these these missiles with the skis on them, which was pretty cool. It's a great vehicle though. It's just got a lot of details. So. Yeah, I love it. I love that there's sort of a weird asymmetrical nature to it. Yes. Uh, and of course, both vehicles came with uh, a sticker sheet, so you've got uh, this great, you've got this great, great sticker sheet for the Ghost Hawk there. So not a whole lot of stickers there. You, get, you know, little Snake Eyes nameplate down there, and some great GI Joe, you know, symbols. You know, step away, clean clear. The good thing about these, like the other ones we talked about, uh, these since these are on clear backings, they actually show up really nicely uh, when they're applied to the vehicles. They show up really good because, like, you know, you don't. It's not an all black or all blue or all gray vehicle. It's you know, they're white vehicles, so they well, show up. It's Arctic, yeah. yeah. It's Arctic, so they show up pretty nice. And then you've got this awesomely huge sticker sheet, which is great. Oh, son. I love it. You, you've never seen the Defiant or the, no, the I flag. No, I never got a chance to put those the stickers on. The flag had sheets. I mean, like three or four sheets. Yeah, I never got to put those stickers on. But Magazine size. Uh, I miss these days where, you know, the, they would come with sticker sheets. When, as it got, you know, just recently, the Joe vehicles have started coming with sticker sheets again. Yeah. Uh, but for a while there, they were coming with all pre-applied stickers, which kind of sucked. That was great. Yeah. I, well, not really. I hated that. That was that. awesome. It was the worst part. Loved it. And then, of course, you've got uh, you've got your, your instruction manuals here. On one uh, side. Like the Cobra Wolf here. You've got your instruction manual for the Cobra Wolf on one side, which is pretty cool. And then on the other side, you've got your... The blueprints. Yeah, your nice blueprints, which is a nice callback to the Vintage yeah, line. Which was like one of my favorite parts yep. was, was reading about the different features. Yep. In, in the in the in-world, you know, idea. Yeah. So you've got your features here on your, uh, on your right, and then on the left, you've got a detailed schematic of the vehicle, which is pretty cool. Um, I love it though. Love the love the instruction manuals, and then you've got the one for the for the ghost hawk. Here. So on one side you've got the the directions and the instructions how to put the ghost hawk and all the stickers, and then on the back side you've got of course uh, your blueprint, which is pretty cool. Love these vehicles. I love I love vintage Joe vehicles because of that one reason. And then that brings us to let me put Snake Eyes here and put him back on his his plate there. Brings us to the figures. We've got Snake Eyes and Snow Viper. Ice Viper. Or Ice Viper, I'm sorry. Uh, take a look at the uh, the Snake Eyes figure first there, Dave. All right, well, um, I'm sure other people can tell you the parts that he's made out of. He's pretty much recycled. I think the head is 30th anniversary. Because um, you can see his eyes. Because, yeah, if you lift up his visor, um, you might want to do that because my fingers are yeah. sad. But you can actually see his the, the, the part of the mask where his eyes are is... is there you can yeah. see his eyes which is always pretty cool he's got like a flight suit on um which is it's, appropriate because he's the ghost hawk pilot yeah, since he's piloting the ghost hawk he's got his traditional um they're actually mac 10s usually he had the uzis but now he's upgraded to mac 10s well why not why not i mean why wouldn't you and i pulled him off his stand uh he comes with the stand and again like the 50th anniversary it does have the, the gold uh raised gi joe and it's got his name on it yes it's got two pegs which are baffling me at the moment uh <laughs> And of course, because you know you can never have Snake Eyes not be a ninja, he's got his sword. Um, and the 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 and the sword, the, the scabbard. There. Yeah, the scabbard is like a backpack. Yeah. it pegs into his back. Yeah, it's removable. You gotta yeah, you gotta take it off if you want him to pilot the actual um, vehicle. Right, because he won't fit in there. With he the won't one. fit in it with the, no. with the thing on. But other than that, yeah. Yep. And then you've got the awesome, awesome ice, ice fiber. Ice fiber here. And this was the. The Ice Viper and the Wolf were two of my favorite things. I mean, it was my favorite vehicle and one of my favorite Cobras as a kid. Yes. They're they're fairly, again, he's cobbled together 
um, and you can tell. But he's got the helmet and the goggles, and you know, the original figure had like the goggles molded onto the helmet. Right. A lot of the pieces, like the, the little uh, collar and the bandolier is all one piece, it's been added to the figure. Comes with an extra little uh, Rise of Cobra pistol. Man. Um, just <laughs> Which actually, some... the Rise of Cobra pistols, I asked Dave this, I wasn't familiar with it, and it actually has a peg in the side of the pistol because all the Rise of Cobra figures, you would be able to plug those you, you, into the you legs. You peg them into their yeah. legs like a yeah. holster. And, and yeah. speaking of holsters, like the actual vintage figure, he comes with two sides, which, which have little um, holders on the sides of his legs. Yep, and those just. Those just slide right in. The side blade, the, the middle blade, actually just slides right into the groove there, which is pretty cool. Which is neat, yeah, and that's very accurate to the vintage figure. And yep. then he comes with a little submachine gun. Um, I can't remember if which one came with a gun or not. I remember yeah. it came with the, the, the size. It came with the size. I, I love the figure's removable helmet here. I think that's you know, that's probably one of my favorite uh, the, the vintage figure had a removable helmet. See, I don't remember the vintage figure having a removable helmet. No, he had a removable helmet. Um, it was all one piece. It wasn't didn't have the goggles. But it was all one piece, and, and it was gray. Yeah, because the goggles here are... Are a removable. separate, yeah, yeah. Are a separate molded piece there, um, which unfortunately is kind of sad because just like a, a lot of the, like Dave, I was asking Dave, a lot of the Viper figures here, uh, none of them can actually wear their goggles because if you no. were to try to put these goggle pieces on this Viper, well, because it's, it's designed to replicate the vintage figure, and on the vintage right. figure, the goggles were molded onto the helmet, so, right. so, so it doesn't really fit on his head. No, and they don't really fit on, on the, the back of the helmet very well. good. Yeah, either, so it's, um, it's a very cool figure, though. I, I think. I think both these figures and the vehicles themselves are, are really well done, and they're a nice addition to anyone's G.I. Joe collection, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of having yet another Snake Eyes, but I think he's really well done, and he's very right. cool. Oh, oh, no. No, he killed Snake Eyes. Oh, no, Cobra! No. Cobra! Cobra! Oh. He passed out to the excitement. Yes, apparently. There you go, guys. There's a look at the awesome G.I. Joe 50th anniversary. What's the name of this set again? Um... Yeah. Me. I got it. Arctic <laughs> Battle Below Zero. I don't exactly. know why I couldn't Arctic remember that. I was like, what? Yeah, Arctic Shenanigans. The Battle Below Zero. I don't know why I couldn't remember that name. I'm I don't saying. know. I can never remember it either. I can never remember any names. Uh, the names. Battle Below Zero box set, uh, which is a Toys R Us exclusive shared with Big Bad Toy Store. Shared with Big Bad, yeah. Uh, so you can get this on... Uh, Although it seems like Toys R Us got it in way before Big Bad. Way before Big Bad did. Because I think you had some on order, didn't you? And you canceled yours when you found them at Toys R Us? Yes, I did. Thank you for bringing that up. I do. I'm sure we'll get them as a sponsor again anytime soon. It's a great set though. I mean, you've got some classic vehicles, uh, one of which is the first time it's been offered again since the vintage since line. Since 87, really. Uh, yeah, since 87. So uh, it's a chance. And, and and what's cool about this is it's basically, I don't think they did anything different to this vehicle. I think it literally almost is the vintage mold. It is as close to the original vehicle as you can get. So if you're having trouble, if it's, it's a vehicle you want for your vintage line and you really don't care that much, you can get this vehicle. It ties right in with the vintage line. It looks looks great. Um, I mean, the, the 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 pegs are different. That's about it. Really. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, that's truly really the only main difference uh, at the end. But uh, great vehicles, though. Uh, uh, great great vintage style vehicles with some great uh, great you know uh, 50th anniversary figure releases, especially in Snake Eyes. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, Dave and I will be back real soon though with uh, a, with some more all new GI Joe reviews. Uh, we've got some more two packs coming out real soon that we'll Hopefully take a look someday at. Soon, yeah. When they come out, we'll take a look at those. Uh, so there you go, gang. Uh, thanks to this guy for bringing toys because yep. that's always a good thing. It's always fun. It's always, uh, especially Joe's. Yeah. Well, you are I, the, do, I do love Joe. You are I the really overseer do. of Joe's. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be happy to knock me down a peg or two on, uh, on that. And and they can. And one of which is uh, named uh, my gears are. <laughs> Yeah. There you go, guys. <laughs> we'll be back, like I said, again real soon with some more G.I. Joe reviews, so stay tuned until then, gang. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash order. Hit subscribe. It helps us out greatly. Uh, and then you can hear Dave and I every week on ToyWorldOrder.com on Dave and Noel's Toys and Collectibles, where Dave Indeed. and I wax uh, poetic about toys and games and anything that comes to mind that deals with nerd, nerdosity. Nerdosity? So seriously, we got to wrap it up. So, gang, we'll be back next time, and until then, gang, keep playing with your toys. He said it this time, not the puppet, which is awesome. Take care, guys. Pachoo, 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 pachoo. Really? I'm sorry.